From the station working for you, this is Good Morning Indiana, streaming now. And good morning. Thanks for joining us at 430 for Good Morning Indiana. Meg and Shin. And I'm Lauren Casey, and you can see it right here behind me. It is a storm team alert day. We want to get right over to Todd Clawson to break down what we can expect before people head out the door for their morning drive, Todd. Yeah, Lauren, it's going to be a whole mixed bag of weather here as we go forward throughout the day. Some snow, some freezing rain, and then eventually for everybody later on today, we're looking at just plain old rain. Uh, WRTV storm team radar pretty quiet right now. There's no immediate concern if you're walking out the door. Uh, within the next hour or two, but the precipitation isn't all that far away. Just now approaching uh, the Evansville area. The heaviest of the precipitation extends all the way back through Missouri into parts of Kansas, and this is all going to start to lift north into our area as we work our way into uh, the middle half of the morning here and then eventually into the afternoon hours. Obviously, every time you're dealing with precipitation this time of year, temperatures are very, very critical. Our temperatures today are slowly going to start to climb, but it's going to take a little while for that to happen. We're a degree below freezing right now in Indianapolis, right at freezing in Bloomington, 31 in Lafayette, and these temperatures should go down another couple degrees before that precipitation starts to make its way into the area. Winter weather advisories, they are posted across most of the area. Look for a lot of that precipitation to start to move in by the time we get to 10 a.m. Again, beginning as snow for most of us, but we should transition fairly quickly in most areas, especially to the south of that combination of a freezing rain. And then eventually, by the time we get to 2, 3 o'clock later on this afternoon, we'll go over to all rain. We'll break it down for you hour by hour using TrueCast coming up in just a couple minutes. All right, Todd, thank you so much. Let's take a look at your commute right now. As Todd just mentioned, we don't have any immediate threats right now in terms of weather on the roads. You'll notice the roads are pretty dry and everything's traveling smoothly around the metro area. This is I-65 at 30th Street north of downtown. We'll continue to keep you updated as conditions may change throughout our commute and throughout the show this morning. New from overnight, another shooting investigation is underway right here in Indianapolis. This after a weekend of deadly violence, police were called to Red Skin Place near 30th Street and German Church Road around 2.30 this morning. When they arrived, they found a person shot. That victim was taken to the hospital in critical condition. Police have not released any information about a suspect at this time. There are no right words to say at this time time when our community must come to terms with the largest mass casualty shooting in more than a decade. A community continues to mourn after six people were killed and a child was injured in a deadly shooting Sunday morning. We're con and we are continuing, Megan, to follow this developing story as officials call on the public for help. Lauren, here's the latest from police this morning. They were first called to a home on 36th Street where they found a boy suffering from a gunshot wound and he was taken to a hospital and is expected to survive. That scene led police to a home on Adams Street where they found five people dead, including a child and pregnant woman. The pregnant woman was taken to the hospital where she and her unborn baby died. Police are considering this a mass murder situation and believe the shooting was not random. Mayor Joe Hogsett and I am PD leaders are now urging the community to help catch the people involved. I want those responsible to know that the full might of local, state, and federal law enforcement are coming for them as I speak. Be the person who says this type of violence, this senseless terror, has no place in our community. IMPD says they do not have any suspects or motive at this time, but there could have been more than one shooter in the situation. Anyone with information is urged to call the Crime Stoppers number. That's 317-262-TIPS. And we have more details on this case in our WRTV website at WRTV.com. And Megan, the mass murder on Adams Street comes 15 years after a horrific scene on Hamilton Avenue in June of 2006. Now, this impacted three families. Seven people, including three children, were killed during a home invasion. Two men were arrested and convicted in that case. Now, we spoke with Jane Covarrubias. Her family members were killed on Hamilton Avenue in that ma past mass murder situation. And when she heard about the Adams Street deaths, she says she was overwhelmed with emotion 
emotions. In a statement to WRTV, she says, quote, we are still at a loss of words when something like this happens. Our anxiety levels go up and to this day we haven't fully healed. Not sure if we ever will, end quote. Janie goes on to say that we pray that the people affected today find peace during this difficult time. May God help the police and the people affected find justice and peace, end quote. Lauren, now to the latest on Indiana's battle against COVID-19. More than 5,000 new cases were reported over the weekend. The State Department of Health reported about 3,200 new cases on Saturday and 2,565 on Sunday. Indiana's total cases have now surpassed 611,000. 73 new deaths were also reported this weekend. 1,165 have happened so far in January, but that is still less than half the total number we saw in December. And so far, more than 418,000 Hoosiers have been given their first dose of a COVID-19 vaccine. And today, community-based health care is ready to distribute more vaccines. The Raphael Health Center on 34th Street near Central Avenue and vaccinations are already scheduled for the next four weeks. Health officials say it's critical to get the vaccines to people in underserved communities. The state's been intentional about saying, okay, we we recognize that there's going to be vaccine hesitancy, that there's difficulty in getting a message across to underserved communities, rural communities, minority communities, and health centers are that, that connection point. Again, kind of back to what the health center does, they're based in the community and they're driven by the community. And so there's a natural trust there. And so to reach underserved areas, the state recognized uh, very appropriately that health centers are that vehicle to make that connection point. A center started a standby list, so no doses will go to waste if someone misses their appointment. Right now, anyone age 70 and older, long-term care residents, first responders, and health care workers are eligible for the vaccine in Indiana. So you can register at ourshot.in.gov or by calling 211. And up in Fishers, a max, mass vac vaccination site will open this morning. The former Marsh store, located at the corner of 116th Street and Brook School Road, has been transformed for this project. At minimum, the Fishers Health Department expects the site to vaccinate more than 1,600 people a day. You must have a pre-scheduled appointment and be free of COVID-19 symptoms, Megan. Lauren, as Indiana prepares to host March Madness, the state, Indiana Sports Corps, and the NCAA are launching Mask Madness today. These free masks will start to be handed out across the state. It's an effort to help promote safety ahead of the big event. More than 100,000 of the these masks will be distributed today through Final Four weekend. Places like Clean Gleaners Food Bank, universities, and Indianapolis public spaces will be part of handing them out. If you get one, they are encouraged to share it. You are encouraged to share it on social media with the hashtag Mask Madness. And this year, NCAA men's basketball tournament will be the first ever to be conducted exclusively in one state. Very exciting. Looking forward to that. And if you're thinking about going out to dinner soon, maybe you're looking for a family outing, Devour Indie Winterfest is officially underway. And there are more than 100 restaurants taking part in this year, and they really need your support as the pandemic restrictions continue. For two weeks, restaurants in and around Indianapolis are offering special deals. Organizers say it's a perfect chance to support your favorite hospitality business. We talked with the manager at St. Elmo's Steakhouse, where they're offering a traditional three-course meal for $40 a person. She says for downtown restaurants in recent weeks, things have started to feel a little bit closer to normal with conventions in town. She hopes Devour India attracts people back to their local restaurants. I'm hoping that it gives a boost to everybody on our end and just the guests. I mean, just getting it to see people and, um, you know, seeing the, the safety precautions we've taken to make sure everybody feels comfortable to come out during this time. And at the same time, um, just it just makes everybody happy, I think, just to be around each other. Um, as much as possible, you know, obviously at a safe distance. Well, Devour India is supporting the Indiana Hospitality Relief Fund, which gives back to employees in the hospitality industry who need financial assistance during the pandemic. This event runs through February 6th. Today, lawmakers are moving forward with efforts to impeach former President Trump. Coming up, the state steps they are taking to officially launch Trump's second impeachment proceedings. And Super Bowl 55 is set. How the two teams are already making history ahead of the big game, Todd.
And Lauren, a winter storm is heading our way, and that's why it's a WRTV Storm Team Alert Day. You see the rain, you see the snow. There's even some severe weather on the southern flank of this storm system. We're on the winter side of things. We'll break it all down for you how much rain, how much snow, and how much ice we could see across the Hoosier State coming up in your WRTV Storm Team forecast. Welcome back. The time right now is 442 here on your Monday. We're keeping a close eye on traffic this morning. No weather related issues at this early hour, but that's something we're monitoring throughout your morning. This is I 70 at Rural Street and Keystone Avenue, where traffic is traveling smoothly, both eastbound and westbound. No issues to slow you down. So the single article of impeachment against former President Trump will be delivered to the Senate today, Megan. That's right, Lauren, and both Democrats and Republicans have agreed to a two week delay for the start of the trial. But this morning, Trump is facing new allegations that could come up in his trial. ABC's Alex Frechet joins us with the details. In a matter of hours, the House will send that single article of impeachment to the Senate. And this morning, Democrats are voicing outrage over new allegations that former President Donald Trump considered using his Justice Department to try to overturn the election. As if it's not enough that he sent an angry mob down the mall to invade the Capitol. The Wall Street Journal reports that Trump wanted the department to sue states in the Supreme Court. And when that plan failed, the New York Times says he allegedly plotted to remove his acting attorney general and replace him with a loyalist who was willing to help him fight President Joe Biden's victory in Georgia. The Justice Department hasn't commented on those reports, and Trump hasn't addressed these specific allegations against him. Fight like hell. The former president is already charged with incitement of insurrection after he urged his supporters to march to the Capitol. His impeachment trial, now scheduled to start the week of February 8th, it will be fair, but it will move at a relatively fast pace. Democrats would need at least 17 Republicans to vote to convict Trump. GOP leader Mitch McConnell hasn't said how he'll vote, but a growing number of Republicans are now blasting the trial before it even begins. I think the trial is stupid. Uh, I think it's counterproductive. We already have a flaming fire in this country, and it's like taking a bunch of gasoline and pouring it on top of the fire. On Tuesday, senators will be sworn in as jurors, but both sides have agreed to delay the trial for two weeks. That'll allow the Trump team more time to prepare and also give Democrats a chance to confirm President Biden's cabinet nominations and work on other legislation. Alex Perche, ABC News, Washington. It is 445. Police departments nationwide are grappling with how to deal with off-duty officers involved in the Capitol riot and how they should be disciplined. In Virginia, two officers posed for a photo have now been charged in connection to entering a restricted building. Meanwhile, in Seattle, five officers are being investigated as to whether their actions are protected by free speech or if it crossed the line of breaking the law. A survey from the Associated Press found that at least 12 states are looking into whether officers participated in the violence while in Washington. Starting today, President Biden is reinstating COVID travel restrictions for international travelers. It affects people coming from Brazil, South Africa, Ireland, the UK, and 26 other European nations. It's due to new COVID-19 variants spreading throughout the world. The new restriction reverses an order by former President Trump that called for relaxing those restrictions. Trump signed an executive order lifting such regulations before the inauguration that was supposed to take effect on Tuesday, Lauren. It is 446 Apple working on a new big project. The tech company Apple reportedly working on a new virtual reality headset. According to Bloomberg, the headset will mainly be used as an augmented reality device like Sony's PlayStation VR and Oculus systems. Apple is not yet saying anything about this project, but tech insiders say the headset will be a high-end pair of VR glasses with a more mainstream version to come out later. The headset would be Apple's first new product type since its release of the Apple Watch in 2015. All right, back here at home, we got to get a look at our forecast for today, a Storm Team Alert Day, Todd. Yeah, there's a lot going on in this forecast. We're virtually going to have almost every form of precipitation on the winter spectrum, at least uh, throughout the course of the day today. First, some snow, then some freezing rain, maybe a little bit of sleet mixed in before everybody at some point, whether it's mid-morning in southern locations or mid-afternoon in northern locations, transitions over to all rain. Uh, obviously, the biggest issue will be slick roadways out there. I don't think we see enough ice to cause a lot of damage as far as trees coming down and power lines coming down, uh, but definitely enough in the way of ice slicking up the roadways. 
Radar is fairly quiet right now here in central Indiana. You just notice to the south here in Seymour or to south of Seymour, a few returns are starting to appear here in Indiana, but the bulk of the precipitation is still well off uh, to our west. We have flash flood warnings out there. There's some heavy rainfall in here. Uh, here's a thunderstorm warning down across parts of Texas on the southern side of this system. And so it's a pretty dynamic storm system that's going to be lifting through the area during the course of the day today. Now, obviously, when you're dealing with wintry precipitation, Temperatures very, very critical. Most of us are at or below freezing right now. And temperature is right at freezing in Bloomington as well as Bedford, 27 in Peru. These temperatures should continue to drop a couple degrees before the precipitation starts. So I do think everybody starts with the wintry weather across the area before we transition over to mainly rain. And you can see the hour by hour breakdown here. I have the temperatures just slowly start to climb later on this afternoon. And the problem is the warm air is less dense than the cold air. So we're trapped with these temperatures at freezing at the surface, but you just go a couple thousand feet up in the atmosphere and that's where the temperatures will be warmer. And that's why it's going to be mainly freezing rain as we work our way into the afternoon and into the evening hours. So as we go throughout the afternoon and evening, we will continue to see this precipit uh, precipitation come across the area, starting as snow here as we work our way into about the 8, 9 o'clock hour, already mixing here with some freezing rain uh, to the south. Could be a pretty good burst of snow here at the onset of the precipitation before eventually the warmer air starts to come in. Here we are at 3, 4 o'clock in the afternoon, and this is mainly going to be rain and maybe a little bit of freezing rain. For those of you well to the north, you probably do not get into the freezing rain. Logansport, Peru, over into Marion, you're probably going to be dealing with snow and then a little bit of sleet mixing in. And this continues off and on into the overnight hours as well and then throughout the day tomorrow. As far as the snow potential goes, we're only looking at maybe a swath of about an inch to an inch and a half where we get that burst of snow. And then as we work our way into the evening hours, that's when you'll add a little bit uh, to the north. The concern no more so than the snow. We can all basically deal with an inch of snow, right? But here's the ice totals from I-70 uh, down to the south. You notice we could see anywhere from a tenth to maybe three tenths of an inch of ice accumulation. And that is enough to cause some big time issues on the roadways. So this afternoon or even mid morning into the afternoon, if you can limit your travels there in southern locations, uh, probably would be advisable. But look at this. This evening, the temperatures actually come up. So right, our temperatures usually drop as we head into the over and eight hours and we get that refreezing. Not going to be the case here as temperatures will be in the mid thirties. And then as we head into uh, the day tomorrow, our rain showers will be out there with the exception uh, well to the north. We may mix still a little bit of wintry weather in throughout the overnight. Here's your seven day planning forecast. It remains unsettled Tuesday and Wednesday. Nothing major. Today is the bigger weather event. Thursday and Friday are dry and then more rain showers in the forecast as we head into Saturday and Sunday. Lauren. All right, Todd, thanks so much. Let's get a check of traffic this morning. Things are pretty quiet out that way. I 65 here in County Line Road down on the south side where everything's traveling up to speed both northbound and southbound. Right now around central Indiana, I'm not monitoring any crashes, no delays, but it is good news if you need to head out the door early this Monday morning. Look at the excitement. It was an exciting moment for Kansas City Chiefs fans as their team is running it back for the second straight Super Bowl. Kansas City beat Buffalo at home last night. Patrick Mahomes and the team now gearing up to face future Hall of Famer Tom Brady and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers at their home. And this is the first time in history that a team in the Super Bowl will play in their home stadium. The Buccaneers beat Green Bay for the NFC title. Tom Brady is also making his own mark on history at 43 years old he will be the oldest player to play in the Super Bowl and this will also be his 10th appearance in the championship game Super Bowl 55 will be played Sunday February 7th Lauren all right well the NFL is rewarding several hard-working health care workers with free tickets to this year's Super Bowl 7500 of those on the front lines will get to attend the big game in Florida this will be part of the 22,000 people allowed at the Super Bowl this year which is less than half of the state all of the healthcare workers have received their full doses of the coronavirus vaccine. And there's a new job on the market, and it's one your childhood self could only dream of. After the break, how you can become a candy taste tester. And follow us on social media. 
Welcome back. There is a new job out there for those with a big sweet tooth, Megan. That's right, Lauren. It is one out of a childhood dream, a candy taste tester. Mm -hmm. The Candy Fun House in Ontario is looking for candyologists. That's a fun nickname. That's a fancy <laughs> title for someone willing to get paid to eat thousands of confectionery products. Candy testers will also help the company pick the products for the inaugural Candy Fun House brand candy line. The position pays $30 per hour. It is available for full-timers or on a permanent contract basis. Those interested in applying can do so through February 15th. Todd, might be a fun, uh, fun <laughs> side job, right? All uh, right, ex exactly. <laughs> I mean, you might pack on the pounds, but... Right? Uh, <laughs> Get a cavity or two. Yeah, right. Yeah, your dentist will be happy with you, but uh, yeah, not a bad gig. Never heard of that before. All right. It is a WRTV Storm Team Alert Day as we are dealing with a lot of moisture heading our way. It's going to be a mixed bag of precipitation for us. Still probably have an hour or two before it arrives. So that is the good news. If you are heading out on the roadways this morning, the earlier the better. When it arrives, it starts as snow goes over to freezing rain pretty quickly in spots and then potentially some heavier rainfall as well as we work our way throughout the afternoon hours. We'll break it all down for you in more detail coming up when Good Morning Indiana continues right here on WRTV.